Garlic OS is one of my favorite operating systems, if not my favorite, because it's really easy to use, it's a really clean interface, and it just gets out of the way and it lets you enjoy your games. And I'm going to be completely honest, without it, I probably wouldn't even look at my 35XX because it just it made that device. Now, when Black Sarah said he was going to bring it to other devices, I was really excited because that's awesome. You know, a really simple interface, especially with Android devices, just something you can get in and out of games really quickly, just sounded like a really good idea. But after a few weeks of not hearing anything, we finally have the Garlic 2.0 Public Alpha 1, which means you can now use it, you can install it into your device, and you can enjoy Garlic OS. Now, here's the thing though, this is the first release. So things are going to change and knowing Black Seraph, they're going to change rapidly. So don't expect things to stay as they are right now. They're going to improve very quickly. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how to install it and just a quick look at what it has to offer. But before we head over there, there is one important thing I have to make clear. The files are available on GitHub and the fastest way to get there is through his Patreon. This is still a free download though, so you don't have to be a member to be able to get access to it. But if you can, go ahead and sign up. It's only a couple of bucks and it's a huge support for a lot of developers, especially him with the awesome job he's doing. So now, without any more, we're going to get right into that installation. So in order to get Garlic working, we need to download a couple of things. And the easiest way to do that is to go to Blackstar's Patreon and get the files from there. Now, once you're here, you're going to go ahead and scroll down and it's going to be the latest post. It's going to say Garlic OS 2.0. You're going to click on show more and we're going to scroll down a little bit to where it says how to install garlic os now you're going to hit it and right click and open in a new tab where it says same operating system image and you're also going to do the same thing for device specific bootloader that's going to give you two tabs now the first one what you're going to do is scroll down and download arch64 rootfs.7z now, once that's downloaded, we're going to come over here to the next tab and we're going to click where it says bootloader Ambernic RG405. Now, this one's going to work for both the V and the M, so don't worry about it right now. Just go ahead and click it. And here, what we need is the installer APK. So go ahead and click releases and scroll down to where it says installer APK. Download that. And once that's downloaded, the next thing we're going to need to do is scroll up. And over here in the top left corner, it's going to say Garlic OS. Click that. And it's going to take us to this page. From here, the one we want is called INIT underscore template. So go ahead and click that. And it's going to be one of these top three ones. So the one that says INIT, press that one. And we're going to go ahead and download this. That's going to download a text file. So that's it. Those are the files that we need. Now, what we're going to do is drag that over to our SD card. So for that, we're going to go ahead and insert an SD card. Once this pops up, what we want to do is make sure that it's an XFAT. So we're going to check properties and mine's already an XFAT, so I don't have to do anything else. But if you didn't, you can use something like SD card formatter to go ahead and format that SD card over to XFAT. Again, mine's already an XFAT, so I don't have to do any of that, but it's a very quick process. Now, once you have your SD card open, you're going to go ahead and right click. We're going to create a new folder and we're going to name that boot. And while we're here, go ahead and grab that installer APK and just drop it in here. Now we have this boot folder and installer APK. Go ahead and click on boot. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to take this any text file. Go ahead and right click properties and we're going to get rid of where it says text. It's going to give you a warning to say yes. There we go. So now it's just I N I T. We got rid of the text ending. Just hit a drag and drop that and that's going to be it. Now we have that in there. The next thing is this zip here. We're going to grab it and we're going to throw it in there too. And this is going to take a couple seconds. Okay, now once it's in here, we're going to go ahead and extract it. So you can use Zev and Z. I'm going to be using WinRAR. And this one might take a couple minutes, so just be patient. Okay, so that took about two minutes. Not too bad. And now we can get rid of this zip file because we don't need it anymore. And what we have left is that INIT and that root file. That's it. And we're going to back out, make sure everything else is in here. We have our boot, we have our installer, and we're going to go ahead and jump over back to our handheld. 
Okay, and now we're back on our handheld. Go ahead and insert your SD card and boot up the device normally. Once you do, you're gonna go into your files. What we're looking for is that APK that we put in the SD card next to our boot folder. That one, we're gonna to have to install it because that's what's gonna make everything work. Now, once you find it, you're just gonna go ahead and select it, install it, and you're gonna run it once. That's all you have to do. You don't have to run this again unless you want to uninstall it. So luckily this isn't something you have to be doing every time you boot up or nothing like that. Just this one time and that's it. So at this point, we're just going to power off because we're going to go ahead and boot into garlic. Now to do the actual boot up into garlic OS, what you have to do is power it on and then you're going to go ahead and hold the function button. Now the easiest way to do this for me at least is to hold the power button and count one Mississippi and then just hold the function button and hold both of them down until the device actually boots up into garlic OS. And that's it. Now we're booted up into Garlic OS. And if you do mess this up, don't worry about it. It's just going to boot up into regular Android. And all you have to do is repeat the process. It might sound like a little bit of a pain, but it's not that hard. It's just one Mississippi, hold two buttons, and then just wait for it to boot. And for now, that's about it. That's all we can do at this point, because now we have to power it off again so we can go ahead and add our systems and our BIOS and all of that. Now, one quick mention here is that the 2 Plus does have support for Garlic now, but unfortunately, you have to have either lineage os or android 11 installed and i didn't do any of those it just never really seemed worth it to me so at this point i can't really show you how to do it but if you do meet those requirements and it is something you want to see and we get enough requests for it we can definitely cover it here too i think it's really cool that the 2 plus does have support for it but unfortunately retroid stopped updating it and the last update was a manual one so the whole process is a little bit more involved than what i would have liked it to be so maybe in the future, but for now, let's take that SD card out and let's keep going. Okay, so now we're back on the PC and once you pop your SD card back in, you're going to notice that there's a bunch of folders. You can delete most of them. All you really need to keep is boot, library, and retroarch. The rest, you can get rid of them. They just clutter things up a little too much for my liking. Now to add our games, we're going to go to library and we're going to see all of these folders here that are already pre-named don't change any of them don't adjust the names nothing like that just keep them as is and add your games here in order to add our bios files what we need to do is go to retroarch system and we're going to drag and drop in here now how long this is going to take is going to be completely depending on how many games you're adding and what systems like for something like playstation I would recommend using CHD files. They're just gonna work a little bit better, but it is gonna take time because some of these games are a little bit heavier. So it's really gonna depend on the size of your library and what you're gonna be playing on here. But that's it for the SD card. Now you're ready to go ahead and eject it and pop it back into your handheld. So the actual experience of using it is really similar to what you had in the 35XX. You only have a few options for the menu, like RetroArch, you have Resume, favorites library and that's about it now if you press the function button here it's going to take you to a menu where you can adjust the time and the language pretty cool that we have different language options and you do want to set the time now when you set the time it doesn't always change right away so you might have to reset it to notice that change but it is working now if you needed to make adjustments at a system level you would have to go into retroarch and make those adjustments yourself now this is regular retroarch so there isn't anything special going on here whatever adjustments you would normally make you can do them here things like input bindings or changing hotkeys and all of that i'm not going to get into how to set up retroarch right now because that is something that i want to do in the future just basically what i do for retroarch but for right now the cool thing is garlic has everything pre-configured so you already have hotkeys and everything's ready for you to go things are in the right aspect ratio all of that now if we take a look at the libraries, everything's already set up per system and you get this cool little art for each one. Unfortunately though, there is no box art and I did have some issues with like Pico 8 where it would load but my controllers weren't being recognized and I couldn't do anything to adjust that. So I'm sure this is going to get fixed, it's just right now. Always remember, this is the first alpha so things are not going to work 100%. If we go into a specific system, we do have some options for each game, things like resetting it or adding it to favorite so we can have easier access to it. You're going to be able to do all that here. You can also change the time and date. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to be game specific or if it's just an option that's there, but I do have to spend a little more time with it to kind of see what's going on here. Going back to the main menu, here's our favorites. I haven't added any games here, so there's nothing there. And then we also have resume. So games that you have been playing that you just want to go in and out quickly, they're all going to be here. And this is the best feature of both Garlic OS and Onion OS. So to me, that's kind of what sets them aside. 
And if I actually go into a game, you can see that everything's already mapped. I don't have to worry about any bindings except for the stick. Now, if you wanted to use the stick, you do have to go in there and map that yourself. But if I press the function button again, that's going to bring me back to that switcher and I can play a different game. And this is a really cool feature and I love the Black Server was actually able to make this work. I know Onion OS has it too, so it is really, really cool to see it in a different handheld outside of the Mega Mini and the 35XX. Now, as far as hotkeys go, you have to hold down the function button. Don't just tap it. If not, it's going to kick you out of the game and that can be a little annoying. So function plus select is FPS counter. Function plus start is going to pause your game. Function plus X is going to be retro arch menu. Function plus R1 is going to fast forward. R2 is save state. L1 is going to slow down. L2 is going to load a state. And these are kind of like the universal garlic hotkeys. So if you're used to the 35XX, you're not going to have any problems here. So that's pretty much it as far as the interface and the hotkeys and all that stuff. This should be enough to kind of get you going with garlic OS. Now, as far as performance is concerned, you shouldn't really have any issues with any of these systems because they're all lower end systems. This is going to cap out a PlayStation 1 and the T618 isn't going to have any issues at all running any of these games. Same thing for the Retro Pocket 2 Plus if you do happen to install this into that handheld. Now, here's the thing. You're probably going to get a lot more performance out of Gamma OS than you are going to be getting out of Garlic, at least for right now. Just you're going to have a lot more optimizations going on, a lot more options. The emulators are going to be different. This is just going to be a retro arch all the way. So it's really going to depend what kind of experience you want out of your system. But as far as the performance itself, everything from PlayStation 1 on down is going to work without any real issues. Same thing for arcade. Now you can even use enhanced graphics, but here's the thing. When you try to fast forward with that, you can really tell that there's not a lot of overhead with these systems. So you're not going to get as much out of it that's all i'm trying to say here great option this is going to get a lot better than in your future but right now you're going to be a little bit limited so we're going to hold off the whole emulation showcase and all of that till a later date when garlic is a little bit more polished and it's really ready for prime time this is just for those that want to tinker with it that are really really excited like i am that just can't wait to get their hands on it and see what is going to be the potential of these previously locked t618 devices that's the really exciting part is that up to this point we could either go with stock android or we were going to get gamma os that's it now we have a whole new world of possibilities or at least garlic you know that's at least a possibility now of other things and other experiences we can have with these handhelds so that's pretty cool so i think that's gonna wrap it up for today obviously garlic isn't finished yet it's not ready to be your main operating system and it probably won't ever be your main operating system on any of these mid higher end type android devices simply because these handhelds can actually play things like ds and some 3ds some gamecube some playstation so when you go into something like garlic os you're not even losing out on that you're losing out on n64 you're losing out on dreamcast you're losing out on a lot of things now, Garlic is a really cool idea. I love the idea of having a quick access to all of these retro games that you can just pick up and play. That's really, really cool. I love the idea that somebody was able to go in and create this for multiple handhelds because there are going to be more handhelds coming in the future. This isn't going to be all of them. That's really, really cool. I'm probably going to keep using it. Should this be something that you're using on the daily? Maybe, because one thing that Garlic does do is it helps you really stay focused on a couple of games. When you have that quick selection and you go in there and you look at the last game you were playing, it's really easy to just press on that and go right back into what you were doing. So maybe if you're one of those people that gets kind of a paralysis by analysis because you have way too many games, this might be a really good option for you. Especially if you're not really trying to play anything higher end right now. So. Yeah, that's it. I Like I said, I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't. It really helps us out. And I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day.